jiu-jitsu and you're like, what kind of jiu-jitsu should I do? It's often not uh, explicitly told to you. It's like, just come, learn it all. But actually what might help you get ahead and what may help you avoid certain uh, pitfalls is by having a look at certain body types and the games they play. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. Does your body type determine your jiu-jitsu? Hear me out. Are you a long torso, short leg kind of human? Well, standing up and wrestling is going to suit you. But are you a long leg, short torso human? Playing close guard is going to suit you. Now, your coach may have a very different body type to you, which was my experience when I started jiu-jitsu. So that their game suited them. It didn't suit me. But no one ever said to me, hey, man, you got short, stubby legs. You shouldn't play close guard. <laughs> they were like, no, nah, just squeeze. Just cross your big toes. <laughs> so you might have found this that, hey, I'm just playing a certain kind of jiu-jitsu because it feels better. Yeah. But actually, maybe there's something more to this. It's kind of why Big Joey doesn't fuck with De La Hiva. Yeah, it's, it is harder when you don't have the shins. You know when they're like, you know, you put your De La Hiva hook in and then you put your foot up here and you twist. And I'm like, how, how do you keep your foot up there, bro? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Um, so my old coach, Dan Cherubin, has very long shin bones. Like right. f- very. And also huge feet, paddle feet. Like I think he's like a size 14, size 15 yeah. foot kind of dude. So he just whacks that shin bone in there and his foot just goes... It's yeah. wrapping around you. It's hip. like another little shin bone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a three section staff. <laughs> Kung Fu. Kung Fu staff. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. So for him to play De La Hiva is perfect. And also Butterfly, because he's got these massive shin bones. Yeah. It's like it's like the it's like the Great Wall of China. There's no way I'm getting in there. Like a Mongol stuck on the other side. I'm gonna have to go around the backside, sail through the sea and journey through the desert to take that back. But uh, anyway, I've been listening to podcasts on Genghis Khan. Don't worry about that. Um, Here's the deal. For me, I did Taekwondo for 15 years. I probably have no permission physically to do Taekwondo. I have the shortest legs. Yeah. Nothing kind of brought this home harder than uh, in 2007, I actually fought the world champion, um, who is a guy called Resendo Alonso at that time. He was six foot five and fighting 77 kilos. Jesus. And he was all, all legs. Yeah. <laughs> he had the shortest torso. So that meant when he lifted his leg to waist height, it was a head kick on me. Right. Right? So it was absolutely nothing for him to just, he wasn't even trying to stretch. He was just, he just kicked my head off very easily. And also he had all kinds of range. Now, obviously, you've got to find a way to make your body type work for you. But when I came to jiu-jitsu, having shorter legs and a long torso was actually quite an advantage as a grappler for taking down. Like if you have a lower center of gravity, it's actually easier to shoot and get low. Yeah, and it's harder to control your center of mass. That's right. And so also when I lifted my hips, I I could put my head in for passing and pressuring, but my hips were further away because I had a long torso. So that was helpful. Yeah. But it was not helpful for close guard. (laughs) It was so hard. Like I got pretty strong adductors, but trying to get my feet around someone who is of a decent size and like cross my feet, my ankles, my knees, they were so sore. Yeah. All the freaking time. Sorry. No, go on. No, no, no. And then I was like, and then I started to learn about a guy called Marcelo Garcia, Mm. who who is a, a long torso, shorter leg human yeah he played butterfly guard he played x guard i was like wow what is this what is this special stuff don't talk about it it's the dark arts i was like but he's the, he's winning he's very good we have similar bodies shouldn't i copy that no you must do what the master does anyway i got pretty good at close guard but needless to say once i started to learn about you know kind of legs inside and, and different kinds of jujitsu, i was like well this suits me i got strong quads why wouldn't i why wouldn't I elevate people? Why wouldn't I use this tool? And it's because I just didn't understand that the jiu-jitsu I was trying to play didn't suit my body. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think almost no one ever says this to you. Like, I mean, probably if you have long legs, they're like, oh, you should do triangles. Yeah. That was a classic thing. Yeah. Have, have you seen that, Joe? Yeah, it's, it is interesting that no one really, no one really acknowledges it. Very yeah. much. It just kind of, you naturally start to bias towards the things that suit you, I think. Mm. But it takes some time to get there. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, definitely with the old school coaches, I don't think there was any chat. 
acknowledgement of that. Yeah. No. Nah. But uh, say with coaches now, like say with Adam, mm. he, you know, I, I was coaching at Vantage the other night and everyone's got their own unique games. Yes. Because Adam's like, hey, man, I think you should do this. You yeah. know, so I do think it's, it's something you see more of now. Um, I, I guess, you know, one thing to mention is that this is not an excuse to cop out, right? Like it's no. not the case that you got short limbs, oh, never play close guard and never get to understand that. Like go there, absolutely. Yeah. And I can say for myself, also long torso and short legs. Um, close guard was very good to me in the initial few years. Right. But these days, like when I, it, I still default to it, right? Right. You get swept or something and you're like just looking for some kind of control and you like close your guard around someone. I do that to someone that's like half decent. It's very rare that I'm catching any control or any submission from there. Yeah. And I'm like, why did I do this? True. And then they're standing up and then you're like, oh, f- now I've got to bail to something else anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it is fascinating. I guess the other, the other maybe um, point to that, to your old coach is that, there were like two guards back then. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. No, I think there was more than that, but it was just more that this is our gym, this is our style. Yeah. And that's cool. Like this, this, this is the program. There's something to that because you're like, well, if you follow our formula or our, our model, you're going to get so good at this and that's like unbeatable. Yeah. And at that time, Hodger Gracie was the man and he played close guard. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was like that... So there's something I was going to say when I butted in before with, with long-legged folks like Hodger, like Adam, Childs. Sure. When you see someone with really long legs and you see them playing close guard, they're so relaxed. Yeah. Like they're doing work with their upper body, but, but their legs are just like casually around and closed and it's like this nice- There's no work there. Strong connection. Yeah. And I'm like, man, close guard very rarely feels like that for me. No. <laughs> like their heels are like sitting on the ground, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, they've got their knees around your hips and their feet are so far past. Yeah. Well, do you find you get thirsty at training? I do. I do all the time. I'm a sweaty human and I need to hydrate. Now, the biggest problem is by the time you're thirsty, it's a little bit late. You need to hydrate. And that's why we got Sodi. Sodi is sponsoring the show. We've got all the colors of the rainbow. Great flavors here. We've got salty citrus, salty pineapple, salty berry, and my favorite, salty grapefruit and they will be releasing two new mystery flavors soon so why do we need this it's going to prevent our muscle cramps it's going to help our energy delivery and it's also going to mean you're less tired which is an advantage when you're training if you want to maximize your jiu-jitsu and feel good when you're rolling you need to get sodi and when you purchase enter the code bulletproof20 at checkout for 20 percent off oh yeah <clears throat> the reason why i bring this up when you go to MMA, let's look at our, you know, our, our tougher, <laughs> more athletic cousins. They talk about the tail of the tape. Debatable. How tall are these guys? Yeah. What's their reach? What do they weigh? They talk about their backgrounds. They talk about so many factors, right? And just like a couple of inches in reach makes all the difference on a punch, right? Yeah. So, for example, I think it's John Jones has the longest reach like for height, I mean, he's a tall guy. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe six four, six five. I could be wrong in saying that. But his reach is seven foot one or something crazy. Like people always know. I mean, he puts his fingers out. Yeah. Kind of fake eye gouge. Like it kind of, it's a bit not great. But John Jones has amazing reach. That makes a huge difference in striking. Yeah. Same thing. Like um, I believe Conor McGregor's got actually quite a long reach. Yeah. Um, it. Here's the thing, if you've got even Volkanovsky for his height. Big reach. He has big reach, which yeah. means he can touch you, you can't touch him. You know, the, other, the other thing too, for the uninitiated, I only learned this recently, but that the shoulder width contributes to reach. Oh, yeah. I always used to just think it was like shoulder to um, hand length. Yeah. But it's actually the total length. So if you, you it's might look like you've got kind of short arms, but if you've got really broad shoulders, like Volkanovsky, he doesn't yeah. look like a long-armed guy. No. But his shoulders are very broad, so long reach. Because when you rotate, Turn. that's, yeah. For sure. So here's the thing, people don't get See this. See that? That's how you f***ing throw a punch. Oh, God, dynamic. Listen to my other podcast, <laughs> Bulletproof for Striking Arts. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't even know. <laughs> there you go. It's behind the paywall. Um, well, let's look at a guy like Gordon Ryan. He has ridiculously long arms. I didn't realize this, right? Like, I'd watched a few of his tutorials. Uh, I downloaded, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one of his passing uh, BJJ Fanatics things. And what I came to realize is he has f-ing long arms. And I didn't really understand it till I stood next to him. I stood next to him at the um, 2019 ADCC. 
It was just like the Danaher Death Squad crew were standing. It was post comp. I was in around all the, the guys, Lockie had done his thing. So there was like absolute MMA crew. Everyone was there. It was cool because the comp was over. So people were like kind of letting their go. People were just standing around. It wasn't a big deal. Oh my God. Gordon Ryan's hands are almost by his knees. You know how they have that exaggerated look of like the gorilla or the knuckle orangutan? Dragger. Yeah, the knuckle dragger. Part of the reason why Gordon is so comfortable to reach around, like take your back he has incredibly long arms. Now, I actually don't know his wingspan, but I would suggest it is far more than his height. Right, like proportionally. Right? Proportionately, yeah. right? Because that's the, that's the crazy thing. Like, and I think that when I think about my old coach, Dan Cherubin, he also has crazy long arms. He could have you in close guard, pretty much reach all the way around to your back for the far side lat and just turn you around. Yeah. Like, and that is a massive freaking advantage. I, I've never heard anyone in jiu-jitsu talk about how long is that guy's reach? Yeah, it's, it's only true. in MMA they talk about that, right? Yeah. And having long legs and long arms and a short torso means you've got a smaller surface area to control in the middle. Yep. That's actually... Harder that's, to get in on. That's harder to get in on if they're good at using that. Yep. But if you're a kind of Mike Tyson-esque grappler like me, want to get inside and just... You know, I just want to get in close and hug the shit out of you. If I can get inside your long limbs, you're kind of dead. Yeah, and that's the that's the downside, isn't it? Yeah. Like I know with generally with long long armed folks, if I'm able to get like a cross face underhook on them from yeah. the top, once I've controlled that arm overhead, their upper arm is so long that it's it's like really hard so for them hard. to get it back inside. Whereas I get that on someone like you, and it's like you only need a little bit of space, and then your elbow slips back in. Yeah, I got them Vin, Vin Diesel. Short daddies. Yeah. So, you know, and so there, there is definitely pros and cons to it, but then the framing of the long person mm. is a f- nightmare to deal with. It's like these baseball bats coming out at you. Yeah, for sure. You know, Jess Fraser was the first person to sort of, um, she mentioned that about when she's rolling with people, like when she's visiting a gym and she, yeah. she assesses someone's body pre-roll. Ah, so she's like, oh yeah, that's right. And she'll assess them. And I'm like, well, what are you looking for? And she's like, well... If it's someone that's like long and lanky, then I'm like, this guy's going to be like a bag of frames. Yep. And I got to get inside there and shut that shit down. Good call. Um, or if it's someone that's like short, a bit more squat, then she's like, okay, now it's going to be a different kind of thing. I got to, maybe I got to get to guard first. You know, I got to control the back or whatever it is, but she's, she's using the body type as information. Definitely. Which I, I've never done, but when she told me that, I'm like, oh man, that makes so much sense. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for, I'm always assessing physical weakness or strength. Like I remember uh, I went to a Hoyler Gracie seminar and he was talking about how you assess your opponent. It's like, oh, this guy's bigger than me. He's stronger than me, but he looks stiff. He will tap to a foot lock because his ankles will be stiff. Yeah. It will be easier to apply pressure there. Yeah. You know, so he, he would always assess in that way. So um, what I wanted to say is this, like part of the reason why this came up, back in the day I did a anthropometry course which is like just basically learning how to do fat calipers i did it at uh deakin university S- skin fold test is skin fold test it was yep. basically a three-day course on how to do skin folds which is very boring but at least i got my little certificate and i was allowed to do that but also what they talked about is lever length and they explained the difference between if you have like a long femur like your upper leg and shorter shins that will make you good at certain things yep um you know and but running isn't one of them <laughs> right like if you had shorter femurs but you had really long shins that was actually really f-ing helpful right like they were like but if you're like a 50 50 which i am which is like my, my from the edge of my femur to the end and from the top of my tib fib to my ankle so thigh bone to shin, shin bone, bone it's 50 50 yeah right much same. easier for me to squat yeah you know what i mean yeah if you're someone with really long femurs that's really hard because your hips have to go so far back to come down. Yes. You know, does that make sense? Like Absolutely. Same thing. My feet are way too big for my height. Maybe I should maybe I, I should have been taller. I don't know. But I have like a size 12 foot. I'm a pretty I'm a kind of 5'9 stretch into a 5'10 kind of guy. Like my foot shouldn't be that big. I don't need it to be that big. Yeah. But that means I have a much more stable base when I squat. Ah, I have yes. all these factors that just enable me to be good at squatting, yeah. which people probably underestimate. Same thing with bench pressing. 
if you have short arms, bar travels a lot less. Yeah, it's a, it's so much easier. Yeah, but because jujitsu is so f- complicated, and we don't want to think about this shit, <laughs> we're like, just let me roll. I don't want to think about body types and stuff. What you might find is you may be playing a game that doesn't suit your body, and that could be mean you're getting injuries you wouldn't otherwise get if you played a different game. Absolutely. This is kind of my angle. This is what I want to talk about. Because what I had found is even playing single leg X, I couldn't do that against Ben Hodgkinson because he had such long legs. Like I just couldn't put my foot up on his hip. It was so much work. So I had to actually adjust my jiu-jitsu if I wanted to um, play guard against him. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want the best gear for BJJ, you need to go to parryathletics.com. These are our guys. They support the show. George, great guy, great creator, awesome colors, awesome styles, and also the best fit. It feels great. And that's the thing. It's not just that it looks good, it feels good. And the thing that for me I love the most is I can wear the stuff at jiu-jitsu, but then also they've got that, that other side, the cool side, where you can wear it off the mats. And they are our exclusive partner in apparel. If you want to get bulletproof gear, you've got to go to parryathletics.com. And when you buy anything at checkout, enter bulletproof20 for 20% off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I pulled some X guard on Eric on oh. Monday night and he just like, <laughs> he just, he just like moved to the side, <laughs> just like kind of did a half Cossack. And I'm like, I feel nullified here. Yeah. But yeah, it's true, right? Like cert- certain things that work generally, when you find someone that's on a particular end of the spectrum, mm. it all of a sudden may not work. Yeah, definitely. And so for you out there, folks, so you're just starting jiu-jitsu and you're like, what kind of jiu-jitsu should I do? It's often not uh, explicitly told to you. It's like, just come, learn it all. But actually what might help you get ahead and what may help you avoid certain uh, pitfalls is by having a look at certain body types and the games they play. So this is just a, a rough outline that I will put out there that for me having shorter legs... Uh, playing a game that didn't rely on longer levers was better. So, for example, um, De La Hiva, Close Guard, and Spider Guard are great if you have really long legs. Yep. They are, 100%. Butterfly, X Guard, Half Guard is, is a short limb daddy kind of game. Yep. So those games really suit me. Same thing yep. like Reverse De La Hiva. Now you can try like leg triangles. Leg triangle. are not going to be huge if you've got short limbs. No, arm bars. Arm bars. <laughs> yeah. Hip extension. Arm bars, guillotine. Squeeze knees. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I, I struggle to do a DAS, you know, because it's just like trying to get around. Leg attacks are typically hard for longer limb folks too, aren't they? They are because it's hard for you to get your own legs out. Yeah. Whereas if you've so got much. short legs, like here's the funny thing. Kit Dale has a massive torso and very short legs. Yeah. If you tried to keep his legs in your guard, he just bloop, bloop. He just whip them out. Like there was, it was, he had big quads and it's like, it was really hard to control his legs. And I found this rolling with Bruno Malfacini. Uh Malfa is a smaller human. It's so hard to get any control on him. His leg, his arm, like he just slips it out. Yeah. Like what the hell? How can you do anything here? But he had mastered a game, which is a movement-based game, which just meant there was no way to really pin him down. <laughs> yeah. I f- love watching him roll at, like, <laughs> seminars and stuff. Just He just blitzes people. He's like he's on fast forward. Yeah. It's like watching Mighty Mouse fight that ultra-heavy oh. brown belt the other yeah, day. Yeah, all over. It's just like someone's on fast forward, someone's on slow-mo. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's a bit unfair to old mate. In that video, you're like, you're fighting – the goat. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, he put a gi on. Yeah. But that guy moves incredibly. Yeah. And so there, there can be, I would say, there could be an argument for it that if you, not that you need to get out the tape measure, but if you identify, hey, I've got longer legs, maybe I should try this. Because, for example, I, I actually had a bit of a role the other day and someone tried to body triangle me. And I have a thick torso. I always wish I had a more tapered hip, but I just, I have a, a thick body, a fridge body. And this guy wasn't bigger than me. And he was trying to, trying to body triangle me. And I'm like, bro, you're going to hurt your knee. Like, take my back by all means. But bro, don't, don't hurt your knee. And, and this is the thing. I have actually injured myself in a similar way trying to compensate with flexibility. Like, oh, I'm flexible. I can move my leg here. Yeah. And just c- didn't have the, the shin bones for it. I get f- punished, punished every time I throw a body triangle <laughs> on someone. <laughs> you're just squeezing needlessly. And, and I think... 
this is this may speak to some of our our friends out there. If you're a flexible person, rubber guard is just it's money. It's like oh, yeah. there's a guard where I can just I can just put my leg here and put my shit. Wow, that 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 was quite easy to do. And then there's folks out there who are not flexible who are like I want to do rubber guard. I want to be like Eddie Bravo. And they're cranking their knees and they're cranking their ankles and you're like, bro, you're a you're a half move away from recoing your own knee. Yeah. And people are like, no, no, it's 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 fine, it's fine. I just yeah, I'll, I'll stretch it, I'll stretch it, and they never do. So he, here's the challenge: finding the right jujitsu for your body type. I believe that most people do lean towards a particular game that suits them. So if you're a, a kind of bigger body person, big body best. If you you're a high calorie human, you got a bit of weight. Playing off your back isn't going to feel like a lot of fun. It's going to feel good to be on top and squash on people and use your weight and use gravity. That said, I do know I do know some of the some of the larger humans I've trained with who just let you come on top and then they just reverse. Or oh, they reverse. <laughs> they just go whoop and then you're like, Fuck. <laughs> yeah. They let you get the underhook and then yeah. they just trap. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. It's, right? it's just it's not the best strategy because once you catch hold of it, you're like, okay, try not to let that happen again. But yeah, it, it is a strategy, yeah. right? And and so that might speak also to strategy if you're someone who has a particular body type you're like i know how to use what i got you don't necessarily know how to combat what i got yeah so there, there's there's another layer to that game too but no i just wanted to bring it up because i think and i'm not sure and this is we'll see this over time that people who persist in playing a game which is maybe not not contrary to their body type but not the most sympathetic Yes, or simpatico. It's not, it's not, it doesn't mesh up quite as well. Might be struggling. And I know for at least the first two, three years of my jiu-jitsu, I was doing that. I was really trying to play close guard as hard as I could. My adductors got very strong. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just a really hard game for me. And no doubt, like once you close your guard, because your legs are strong and they're like max, like you're going to generate a lot of force there. Yeah. But for sure, there's, a, there's something lost in the efficiency of that position. And there's certain people you just can't do that to. <laughs> you that, just, yeah. You're never getting your legs around. So just fighting endlessly there because your coach says it's a good idea doesn't mean it is the way. Yeah, the, the other thing I've taken away from this, which is you, you, can, like, you can look at training partners and you can kind of understand what their strengths are based on that. You'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, that's why. Whenever I end up in so and so's clothes guard, I usually get triangled because mm. they got big long legs and you know and they're really comfortable there. So then you know it's not the case that you're not trying to work on your triangle defense. It's not the case that you need to avoid bad situations. But then you can think, I'm not going to let them put me in clothes guard. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do in today's training session. I'm going to avoid. And you speak with, like you know, you speak with Adam, and, and he's like, bro, if I get into that situation, like I don't f-ing let it get to there against you because I know you'll do X. I'm like. Oh, you're actually strategizing. Mm. And this is you know, strategies like helpful part of, part of the game. <laughs> um, whereas, you know, for me, I've never really looked at it like that. But so the takeaway for me is like, yeah, like understand that the strategy is a thing. Recognize other people's body types and that might give them a certain ability or advantage in a certain way that you need to be wary of. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And <clears throat> definitely want to just say, because some people say, oh, well, I don't know. I, my coach isn't telling me. Have a look around at jujitsu people, jujitsu folks. And uh, part of the reason why I brought this up was I was talking about that Gordon Ryan passing DVD. And part of the reason why Gordon is so good at doing his kind of posting game where he, he floats with the legs and, and pummels with the legs and leans forward on his arms is his arms are so long. It's so hard to like off balance him. Right. Same thing with Leandro Lowe. Leandro used to do a similar thing where he would post on his arms and kind of float on the legs. A friend of mine, he won't be named, um, has really short arms. Shout out, Justin. Ah, uh, no. Um, and he was like, bro, I'm on this Gordon Ryan stuff, man. It's so good. And he was trying to do the Gordon Ryan posting and he was getting swept. It's like, oh, I might just must be doing it wrong. I'm just not Gordon Ryan. It's like, yeah, but you've got you to consider the, the factors that might be counting against you. Yeah. So not that you ne- necessarily have to meet the guy, but – Look at, if you're a lighter weight person, possibly look at some of those lighter weight folks and, and, and see if you can see some pictures of them, suss them out. Do they have long legs? Do they have a short torso? Or do they have like just even proportions? And then maybe look at that and go, oh, wow, okay, maybe there is there is a body type that suits me and then maybe that person's game will also suit me. Mm. Just a thought. 
There it is. Putting it out there, folks. Now, if you would like to share this with some friends, because we would love you to do that. Um, you know, we often get messages. People say, hey, man, thank you so much. I did the thing you said. It actually helped me a bunch. And I just really appreciate that. And that's, that's awesome. That, that makes our day. That's the reason why we're here. That's why we're doing it. And we do want to connect with more of the BJJ familia worldwide. And the only way we can do that is by getting you guys to like and subscribe. But on an audio platform, not only could you follow, you could give us a five-star rating. This will give us huge help because that then lets the audio platforms know these guys are cool and they will share our stuff with more people. And that's all you got to do. Just five, ten seconds, get in there, beep, pop, boop, give us five stars. That helps us, which helps us help other people. And we appreciate you for helping us.